So then like I was showing you, since there's threads in each one of these, I'm pulling back a little as I thread in. Just the whole idea is to make sure that the threads of the screw are not in both the top and the bottom. Because if it is, it'll bind up. It'll get real tight. And you can strip the threads out, which wouldn't be very good. So I'm snugging that one up. Do the same thing on this end. Now you've probably noticed this funny looking hose or tubing I've got on here. This is a homemade thing and when I found it on the internet they referred to them as rotating rings. It helps when you rotate the scope around and it helps keep it in position. If you've got the thing pointed way up and these start to come loose, the mirror ends much heavier, the scope would start sliding back just a problem and this helps prevent that. So all I did, I went to a hardware store and bought, I believe it's one inch diameter hose and I bought some big uh, hose clamps and these particular ones are about for a four inch diameter tube. I just connected a few of them together. If they have them in stock you can get them for 12 inches or in diameter or more and just get as many as you need and you just tighten them up and have this secured on there. Okay, now earlier I mentioned the importance of having it in balance. The whole idea here, this is kind of like a teeter-totter setup. You've got balancing weights down here and you've got the telescope and the idea is to just get it to where you have approximately the same weight. The, better, the closer you have it, the better. I'm going to hang on to it. I know this thing's close to balance, but the first time you do it, you might not know. So you hang on to it and make sure it's really secure so it's not going to suddenly go zoom on you. You don't want to break your telescope. You don't want it to fall over. You don't want to get hurt. And you can see I've got this actually pretty close. But that's from experience because I've done this so many times. And then... So that means I'm balanced pretty good between the weight and the scope. And now I want to check my balance on this side, which has to do with the, how the scope is slid from side to side, because the mirror end is much heavier. You can see it's not really centered. Here's the center of this, but the center of the telescope's over here somewhere. Now it's not quite right right now, but I don't have an eyepiece in it, which if you have a big eyepiece, it adds some weight. Also, if you have a big finder scope or a camera, it adds some weight. But this isn't, it's not horrible, but you want it to be close. So that's something else you can fine tune. You can do that. by adjusting these two thumb screws here and sliding this back and forth. And this is something that's good to practice inside the house, maybe even have two people do it with a big scope till you get it figured out. And then you can mark it with a piece of tape like I did. You don't want to do this the very first time out in the pitch dark and be fighting it. You want to at least have an idea of what you're doing so that you have a decent night when you go out and try it. Well, somebody's having fun. Okay. This is my hand controller. And as you can see, I've got the old style. If you go and look on the internet, like at telescope.com, where Orion is, at the new Orion Atlas. It's called an EQG. Mine's just an EQ. An EQG is one that has go-to capabilities. This one does not. 
This one here is more manual. It's the old style, but I like it just fine. There are some advantages to the other one, but it's still okay. I've got my declination buttons, which are north and south. I've got RA, which is east and west. On the side, it's kind of hard to read there, but you've got a reversing button so that if you're moving this here and you want it to go to the right and it doesn't, you can reverse the RA and make this go right when you push the right button and left when you put the left. And then the same, there's a reversing button for the deck so that if when you're pushing the declination buttons, you can have them go the way you want. That's all personal preference. If you don't have them on reverse, then this up button when it's right side up will go north. This will go south. This will go uh, west. And then the other one goes east. This is assuming that it's pointed to the south, okay? You then it makes sense. If you're pointed to the south, you got your back at the north. On your right is west, so you, the right hand button would go west or forward, and the left button would slow it down or even stop it or reverse it and go back to the east. Then I've got this NS button here, which is north and south, which is just northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere. If you're in Australia, you're in the southern hemisphere. If you're in the United States, you're northern. Yeah, same with Europe. And over here, we have a 2x, 8x, and 16x. And that's just speed. It's like 2x moves it really slow when you push these buttons. 8x is considerably faster, and 16x is a lot faster. Now, to give you an idea, if you bought one of these, the new model with the go-to, they move as fast as something like 800x. At 16x, it's supposed to take something like 45 minutes to go from one horizon to the other. So you obviously you wouldn't do that. You do it for centering an object or if you're close to an object, like say if you pointed at a bright star and you know what this star is named, say you pointed at Vega or something, and you know there's an object according to your chart that's a degree or so north and a degree or so east or west or what have you, you can fine tune it with this and help find that object. Now right at the minute, I've got this scope pointed straight north. Uh, if I have it exactly on about 89 on the declination and have this rotated just to right on my angle, I would be looking at Polaris. Now what I wanted to show you was you can rotate this tube in the rings to change the position of the eyepiece. Right now I've got it to where it's pretty comfortable. If I had it rotated under here, it might be a little awkward. Some people might like it, but you end up bending backwards and get a sore neck. If I had it way up here, it'd be kind of too high, unless you wanted to stand on a six foot tall step ladder or something, which you can do. It's a matter of preference. And the way I've got it set up right now, this is on the west side. If I decide to point it at something out east, which is out there, I can be looking at something out east, pointed up anywhere from really high to really low. And the eyepiece is pretty close for me. I'm about 5 foot 10. It's another thing to consider. How tall are you when you go and buy one of these great big things? You can buy much smaller ones. This is a 10 inch Newtonian. This thing's kind of a beast. And if you buy an even bigger one, then you're looking at even more of that. Now if I was to point this back to the west, see here's what happens when you're following an object, it gets straight overhead and eventually the telescope 
will actually run into the tripod. So I've got this pointed basically straight up and the object that I've been looking at rises in the east, the tracking motor tracks it, eventually went straight up. That's actually beautiful. That's perfect just about because that's when you're looking through the least amount of atmosphere you get the best view but eventually this comes around and it's like uh oh bam runs right into the tripod leg which is something if you buy one of them go-to ones and it has a problem it could come in there and slam that pretty hard and people don't like that so then I would have to swap these around by uh... you do a flip so that you can go for after the meridian. This is another reason why balance is really important. You don't want this thing to fall over when you're moving it all around. So when you have it this side now it's like I come out here and the object straight overhead it's going to my west I can follow it for a long time this way and now this can throw off your setting circles too if your polar alignments not right you might have to you almost definitely would have to readjust these which just means you find an object that you know you find a bright star center it and then check your setting circles and see if it's the same as what your chart tells you and then see it starts tracking this away and I don't want to move it too far because I don't want to point it at the Sun you're never supposed to point this at the Sun unless you have a solar filter it can It'll magnify that light and heat so much it'd come through. If you were looking through it, it'd burn your eyes. It could melt the insides of this stuff, whatever plastic parts there are. I've even seen a story where a guy had one setting and didn't realize it. He left it out all night, and it was just pointed by chance to the east. And that morning, the sun came up, pointed right down the tube of his scope, went out the eyepiece, and set his part of his house on fire, his back porch, had a little covered roof. So it was just, you know, a little thing there, kind of a fluke. And the guy's house caught on fire. There's kind of your holy grail warning message. Never point it at the sun unless you have the proper filter. You want to really make sure you know what you're doing if you're going to point a telescope at the sun or you could end up blind or destroy your equipment.